Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, October 7th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, and your local emergency management officials for the latest information for your location. Well, we continue to watch uh, the now tropical storm in the Western Caribbean. Uh, Michael has developed as expected out of the disturbance we've been tracking. And if we look closely on the floater today, uh, we'll see if you look carefully, uh, the low level clouds indicate the circulation is uh, elliptically shaped like this, extending from the Yucatan Peninsula out over the Caribbean Sea. Uh, but recon observations have found that a tighter low is trying to form within the eastern end of this elliptically shaped circulation. And this is a typical evolution uh, where one end of these ellipses, usually the down shear end, which in this case is the eastern one because the shear is from left to right here. You can see some of these upper level clouds blowing from west to east. Uh, so this down shear side of the ellipse is uh, where this is trying to tighten up because this is where the convection is and it's enhancing vorticity or spin in this area and so it's trying to relocate the center of the storm over here and we talked about this relocation being a possibility this is what the recon has essentially found today the original position fix uh, was farther west here there's the coast of Mexico and then it jumped over uh, to the east a couple of fixes later and it has uh, strengthened a little bit as well with the pressure now down to 998 millibars before the plane left and you can see here in the satellite underlay there's the convection trying to curl around this new low center that's forming here and so this is going to continue it's a, a gradual process uh, where the low is trying to wrap convection around it but it's still finding that a little bit difficult uh, because there is still some shear trying to keep the thunderstorms off to the eastern side and uh, the circulation as a whole is still rather elliptic uh, which usually means it's loose and not very uh, not very concentrated and so that's normally uh, a sign of disorganization but that will gradually uh, change and improve for Michael over the next day or day and a half because this ellipse is itself rotating around itself earlier this morning it was oriented more like this now it's oriented like this and this will continue uh, to rotate overnight and as soon as it reorients to north south again chances are this convection on the eastern side will be able to start making the circulation more circular as it moves northward toward the Yucatan Channel and it's likely that this will become a tighter more symmetric looking storm uh, by tomorrow night but we do need to see exactly how it looks and where it is uh, by the time it actually enters the Gulf of Mexico as models still disagree on that a little bit and this uh, launching point if you will uh, whether it's near western Cuba or near the northeastern Yucatan will be important for its ultimate track across the Gulf. Here's the water vapor loop of the large scale showing the continued uh, westerly shear impinging upon Michael largely caused by this upper level trough over the central Gulf of Mexico aloft bringing this flow uh, from west to east. Uh, but as we talked about yesterday, this trough is expected to start weakening and move northeastward out of the way uh, due to a couple of things. One being the convective heat release to the north of Michael, which is starting to push on the trough from the south and try to nudge it northward. In addition, we have this really large trough over the Rockies currently over here that's going to translate eastward over the next couple of days and the southerly flow on the eastern side of this is going to also help kick this trough out and inland over the United States in rather short order and what we see on the GFS forecast here the 250 millibar wind upper atmospheric wind uh, by Tuesday afternoon is that Michael has moved up into the Gulf and the trough that was currently there aloft uh, has moved all the way up into the Ohio Valley uh, by this time getting kicked right out of the way of Michael and so what's left behind is a storm in a a relatively light upper level flow uh, after that trough exits and this is a lower shear situation than what Michael is currently dealing with and given that Michael has been able uh, to organize fairly well even under the current shear when that shear lightens further uh, we will likely see additional organization and intensification uh, the big question is exactly how much strengthening to expect and this this is a tough forecast because uh, there will not be zero shear over the Gulf for Michael there is still some you can see some flow coming coming out of the west and even underneath this layer in the mid-levels of the atmosphere there is also a fair bit of shear. Uh, about 15 to 20 knots of shear is likely to impact Michael right through landfall 
And the question is, how will it deal with that? Uh, a lot of storms can be disrupted by that much shear, uh, but some storms, uh, if the environment is otherwise favorable, if there's ample environmental moisture and strong convective instability, some storms uh, can resist that kind of shear, especially if they have really robust inner core structure. And this is something we'll be watching for when Michael moves out over the southern Gulf. How is it structured convectively, and will it uh, attain uh, an organization level that allows it to resist the shear and continue intensifying? Right now, many models actually agree that Michael will be able to intensify, and actually quite a lot, uh, despite some of this moderate shear. And uh, when global models tell you something that unanimously, it usually is for a good reason. And so that's something to take rather seriously at this point. And uh, for that reason, the, the official uh, National Hurricane Center forecast has become stronger for Michael, now forecasting winds of 100 miles per hour at a maximum before the time of landfall. And that forecast could even get a little bit stronger over time here, depending on uh, what Michael does as it enters the Gulf. Again, it's really Monday that I want to see how this looks. Monday, Monday night. Uh, we'll see tomorrow uh, where it is and how it looks here will we'll give us a better idea probably of where it's going to go and how strong it's going to be as it moves. Uh, speaking of its track, uh, we, we have the same general story uh, that we've been talking about. It's fairly straightforward in a broad sense. This is the GFS 500 millibar forecast, roughly the steering level for a hurricane valid Tuesday afternoon. Again, we have this big trough coming across the Rockies, strong southerly flow on the east side of that, and we have a big ridge east of the U.S. over here. And so we have this strong southerly flow between the two features, uh, which is uh, trying to pull the storm northward. There is some subtlety here, though, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the storm's forward speed. And uh, the reason that is so is because this trough is translating eastward over time. As it does so, this ridge will eventually erode. And so what is currently a southerly wind on Tuesday will eventually become more of a southwesterly wind after that. So if we go out to Thursday morning, we'll see that this trough has lifted out into the Midwest. So this was here, this moved northeast, and you can see that it has now lifted out. This ridge has eroded a bit, and so now you can see the steering flows more toward the northeast. Now the storm is already inland on this model, uh, but other models are slower. For example, the European model at the same time still has the storm offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see that if it was that slow, the steering flow has now changed and is more toward the east, and so that would cause the storm to bend more toward the right uh, on the slower model. And indeed, that's what we see. The European model has a more easterly landfall point than does the GFS, which is farther west, because that model is faster. So there is some subtlety here, and the models still disagree on how fast Michael will start moving northward over the Gulf of Mexico. And a lot of that uncertainty, again, happens down here on Monday and early Tuesday. And so this is really the point where we're going to start learning a lot when Michael moves through the Yucatan. Channel. So we'll keep an eye on this uh, over the next day, day and a half, and then hopefully we'll know a lot more. But the general idea is that this will come northward, and the Florida Panhandle is most likely to receive the landfall. It could come as far west as maybe Alabama, but that's probably about as far west as it's likely to come. Uh, probably somewhere in the Florida Panhandle is most likely to get the direct hit, though of course impacts can extend away from the eye. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing that general picture of the storm coming northward becoming a hurricane in the southern Gulf and then continuing to intensify and take a subtle right bend as it moves into the Florida Panhandle and then northeastward into Georgia and the Carolinas where it could bring heavy rainfall inland as well so keep an eye out for that. Uh, there are tropical storm warnings out for western Cuba and the eastern Yucatan Peninsula where adverse conditions especially on the eastern side will occur through tomorrow. And then again, this is the key point, uh, Monday night and early Tuesday, where we'll, we'll really see how this looks and where it is. And after that, uh, th you know, there's some spread here. Uh, again, the cone includes uh, most of the Florida panhandle here. So the exact landfall point, we're not going to be able to narrow down. But the general idea is that a strong storm surge uh, heavy rains, inland flooding, and strong winds uh, could all come together. The complete package of hurricane hazards will affect somebody uh, from this system, as we are now fairly confident that it is going to intensify and uh, be a strengthening hurricane as it approaches the Gulf Coast. Uh, you can see here that the, the point at Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m., is offshore. This is 1 p.m. Central Time, by the way. Uh, but that doesn't mean conditions won't arrive before that. The most likely arrival time is Wednesday morning. And so, uh, again, adverse conditions come before the center of the storm and Tuesday will be your last day to prepare uh, even if this comes in a little bit later on Wednesday or early Thursday uh, Tuesday is going to be the last day that you can safely uh, make preparations in all likelihood 
and again heavy rain could influence uh, even the Florida Peninsula long before this uh, although they're not expected to get the direct impacts from the storm's core so that's it for uh, Michael today we'll uh, keep a close eye on this uh, listen to your local emergency management officials and if you're along the coast and you get told to evacuate please do so storm surge is no joke get out of there if you get an evacuation order we'll likely have hurricane watches up for portions of the Gulf Coast later tonight or early in the morning and so tomorrow you'll wake up and see those watches and uh, that'll indicate that conditions are expected uh, to become dangerous in your area that's it for tonight thanks for watching